Welcome back here on World Talks on TVP World. I'm your host, Diana Skaya. Washington is working on a substantial new aid package for Ukraine, which aims to prevent a significant Russian breakthrough in the country's east. But how might this shift the course of the conflict? Now, joining me to discuss this issue is Rostislav Khotin, senior editor for the Ukrainian service of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and Mikhail Alexeyev, professor of political science uh, at San Diego University. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us here on TVP World this morning. Now, if I can start with Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Khotin. Uh, Zelensky is scheduled to visit Washington this month, and he is set to present what he calls this victory plan we've been, we've been hearing about to President Biden. Now, what are some key elements you think we can expect in this strategy, and how could it possibly influence uh, the course of the war uh, diplomatically? Yes, so we, we don't know too much about this uh, victory plan by, uh, of President Vlad Vladimir Zelensky. We know that he worked personally on this plan. It is his plan, uh, victory plan. Let's don't mix it with uh, uh, Zelensky's peace formula, which consists of 10 points, which was presented to the world a uh, couple years ago. But this new victory plan uh, is uh, apparently has four main points and one additional point. We don't know too much, but what we know is that one point is about security for Ukraine. Another one uh, uh, is about geopolitical place of Ukraine. Possibly means NATO membership. We don't know. We, we only can guess. Next point is about very powerful, as Zelensky put it, very powerful military support for Ukraine, which uh, and, uh, will be available for Ukrainians to use. Next point, uh, according to him, uh, in vague terms, it's uh, uh, the, the free uh, decision by Ukraine about the usage, usage of Western supplied weapons. Now there are a lot of limitations, but Ukraine wants to have a free hand when and how to use Western uh, 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 weapons against, even against uh, military targets on the Russian soil, on the territory of Russian Federation. This is four main points. And one additional uh, point, which will be uh, put in place after the war, after Ukrainian victory. And it seems that it's uh, concerns about uh, economy. It's kind of a rebuilding of Ukraine and massive Western uh, financial support for uh, rebuilding of Ukraine after the war. We know that Zelensky is going to present this plan later this month when he meets President Joe Biden in uh, either in New York or in Washington, uh, possibly in Washington. We don't know yet ex exact details. Also, uh, we know that uh, uh, Zelensky, as I said, he draws this plan uh, personally by himself. It's his plan. Uh, it's called victory plan for Ukraine. Uh, so uh, we know that um, also uh, the Americans, uh, Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor to President Biden, said that no peace plans or victory plans should be imposed on Ukrainians. It should be Ukrainian uh, authored plan. And, and, it, and it, that's how things stand now four main points plus one additional which will be in place after the war that's vaguely how it looks like now uh, thank you mr khotin um uh, mr alexeyev uh, just to go back a little bit on uh, uh what mr khotin just said i want to talk about uh, uh, the fact that ukraine has been continuously requesting these long-range weapons in order to really target deeper into Russian territory. Now, how do you think that this specific request is going to be addressed? Uh, what potential response can we expect to hear from President uh, Biden? What are some of the potential implications for this war's escalation, uh, if any? I mean, we also know that Zelensky will be meeting um, uh, not just President Biden, but also the two other candidates. What can you tell me uh, about this? Well, I think that uh, the smart way to go about it would be not necessarily to announce these things uh, up front. Uh, one potential announcement of uh, the decision to allow Ukraine to strike targets within Russia would be when Ukrainian um, missile attacks actually strike those targets. 
but this is a very essential element. I, I see that as the as the critical element uh, of Zelensky's proposal, because if we look at the big picture uh, of this war, mm -hmm. Russia basically pursues what I call Mariupol 2.0 strategy, erasing uh, Ukrainian towns and cities and other settlements and gradually making those gains and grabbing territory. Well, Ukrainian strategy uh, is the same in, in some ways as le the one that led to the successful pushback uh, of the Russian forces from about 50% of the initially occupied territories. And that's acting uh, in a much more precisely targeted, smarter, long-range way. Uh, we remember how Ukrainian forces destroy supply lines for the Russian troops and then push them out of Kiev region, out of Kherson. And so that would be uh, my guess is the strategy to push the Russians farther out of the Donbass, out of the Crimea by striking those kinds of targets on a long, uh, on a long uh, range. And uh, it will take time. It, it will, of course, take a lot longer. Uh, and that would require uh, not just the permission uh, to use those weapons, but it require uh, also more substantial military assistance. Uh, and uh, my guess is that um, the, uh, it, it's very important for Zelensky uh, to present this not only to Trump, but to Harris and also hopefully to Trump, because one very important element uh, of support for Ukraine is that it remains broadly bipartisan. That's right. And uh, given the uh, recent advan uh, advancements also of Russian troops in eastern uh, Ukraine, uh, particularly in uh, Pokrovsk, how critical uh, can you say is this upcoming U.S. support package uh, in reinforcing Ukraine's defense and preventing Russia from uh, gaining more and, and actually uh, seeing breakthroughs? I mean, I know you mentioned um, you mentioned that importance. Uh, however, what would you, or if, if you can tell me, what would you expect to see in this uh, in this uh, package, gentlemen? Any of you can uh, respond to this? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the Ukrainians want uh, unlimited uh, supply of uh, weapons and ammunition to to Ukraine from the West, especially from America, because everyone is looking what the United States is doing, and the, I mean the European uh, uh, Western partners of Ukraine. They are all looking what America is providing, what America is giving uh, green light for, what kind of supplies, and so on and so forth. And secondly, Ukrainians want unlimited uh, 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 right to strike uh, military targets on Russian territory, on the territory of Russian Federation. Uh, Zelensky said uh, uh, in uh, recent days that uh, the West, uh, the United States are providing uh, weapons very slowly. It's, they are late. They are very late. For instance, Russia used to have uh, uh, air jets, fighter jets. Uh, uh, bombers near Ukrainian borders, and, and they were easy to, 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 to target. They were located like 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers, and the Ukrainians could have targeted them with long-range uh, missiles, for instance, from Atakams and other uh, and uh, air-based uh, missiles. But apparently, Russia has shifted, has moved these uh, air jets, fighter jets and bombers uh, uh, to the distance of at least 500 kilometers from Ukrainian border, deep into Russian Federation. So it will be more difficult for Ukrainians now to target because Ukrainians does, do not want to target missile, to intercept missile when it's already in the air aiming for Ukrainian uh, cities. They want to target the very airplane uh, on the territory uh, of Russian Federation or the airfields. Uh, so, uh, to prevent these uh, 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 yeah. missiles being launched or guided bombs being launched from these airplanes. So, now Russia had uh, this window of time re re window. They moved uh, airplanes back deeper into Russian territory, at least 500 kilometers deep in Russian territory. So, it will be more and more difficult to, 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 to target them. Secondly, Ukrainians want uh, more definitely, you know, uh, artillery shells because the proportion of them 
uh, on bad days was like one to ten. On one Ukrainian shell, uh, 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 Russia responded with ten artillery shells. You know, even one to twelve they were on a very bad days. So uh, that's how the situation looks on the ground. Um. Mr. Mr. Alexey, if I see you I, want to add to that. Well, I will just add to that that uh, one of the critical needs for Ukraine right now, and, and I hope it gets some uh, equipment and support for that, is mm -hmm. fighting those guided glide bombs uh, that Russia launches. It, in, in some ways, they did allow Russia to make those gains. They were a bit of a game changer for Russia uh, in the last uh, half a year or so, especially. And um, the, the Ukrainians also showed that they can successfully combat that, but for that they need more systems like Patriot uh, and comparable systems that can actually be used to strike the aircraft at longer range that delivers those bombs. Uh, but because Russia strikes across the entire territory of Ukraine, uh, including particularly targeting energy infrastructure and with the winter approaching, Ukraine doesn't have enough of those systems. Uh, there was an estimate by Ukrainian military experts that it would need something like 25 Patriot comparable systems to protect its territory and make a difference in the front line. Uh, it, it's not getting any, anywhere near that amount. So uh, if the new package moves in that direction, it would be very helpful. Another one, of course, uh, the uh, plans to provide more aircraft, you know, we have F-16s to train the pilots more quickly uh, would be very helpful as well because uh, that uh, enables Ukrainians, def Ukrainian defenses and then other capabilities can be freed up uh, to fight on the front line, etc., etc. So those kinds of things also, and I believe uh, quite a few of them probably will be in that package. Gentlemen, I want to shift to um, uh, what a uh, quote uh, said by uh, Russia's uh, Medvedev. So he is warning the U.S. and other allies uh, in very simply undiplomatic terms that Moscow's patience is running out, uh, particularly on this Western aid to Ukraine, especially with the fact that uh, Ukrainians are striking Russian territory, right? And that Moscow doesn't necessarily need to use uh, the nuclear option if it has one, if it has access to, you know, because it's saying it has access to non-nuclear weapon technologies that could reduce Kyiv to what Medvedev, I quote, says, a giant molten spot if and when its patience runs out. What can you tell me about these uh, Russian threats, just very briefly? We have to take uh, Dmitry Medvedev's statements with a pinch of salt. He's uh, been very hawkish from the day one of this uh, Russian invasion. So he threatened many times about nuclear uh, strike against Ukraine mm -hmm. using nuclear weapons, first of all. Secondly, uh, uh, we don't know what his influence is in, in the Kremlin. It's third thing. Third, uh, the next thing is that Russia has been drawing red lines for a long time. Now it's a new red line. No usage of weapon, uh, Western supply weapons again targets on the Russian territory, on the territory of Russian Federation. But Ukraine last month just crosses uh, yet another red line when we incursion into Russian Kursk region, which was also taboo uh, from Russian point of view. It was also a red line. And Ukraine successfully uh, crossed the, the border with Russian Federation and now occupies 1,300 square kilometers of sovereign Russian territory. So yet another red line was crossed and there was no nuclear response from, and from Moscow. That's so right. let's take with a pinch of salt these nuclear threats from Medvedev. Mr. Alexeyev, can you agree with that? Just very I briefly, because we're I, out of time. We're out of time. I think it's an incredible threat. And, uh, you know, it, it would go against Russia's strategy of trying to win this war Thank of attrition you. because it would draw significant Thank attention you. to this. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, Mr. Rotislav Khotin and Mikhail Alexey, for being with us uh, here this morning. And that's all for this edition of World Talks on TVP World. I'm your host, Diana Skaya. Thanks for watching.